Welcome in Count Coming Seek students. My name is Christy Perez, class of 2025. This is your orientation. We're super excited to have you here with us. We're going to share with you a little bit more about our program, about Baruch College. You'll have the opportunity to meet fellow students like yourselves, um, as well as our staff. Um, student leaders and executive leadership here at Baruch College. So we're super excited to have you here. Welcome. I would like to now introduce our Vice President of Enrollment Management and Strategic Academic Initiatives, Vice President Mary Gorman, to share some welcoming response, welcoming remarks. Thanks so much, Christy. Welcome and congratulations, everyone. Um, I was going to say that I'm really sorry we can't be doing this in person, and on some level I am really sorry that we can't be doing this in person, but as we are sitting here in what is looking like the hottest day of the summer so far, I think everybody's just a little relieved not to have to get on the subway, but we are really looking forward to seeing you on campus in the fall. Um, Today is the first day of your college career. It's your first day truly as a Baruch Bearcat. And I'm so glad to be here to celebrate that with you. Um, you're here because we see your talent, your dedication and your resilience, especially in the face of what the last year and a half has brought. Um, there's always nervousness about starting new things, especially if that new thing is a little bit out of your comfort zone. Um, maybe you're the first person in your family to go to college. Maybe you're the only one in your friend group who's coming to Baruch. Um, you know, you might be sitting here even as we speak saying, uh, do I belong here? Can I tell you something? The SEEK team, the admissions folks, myself, we've been doing this a long time. And at the risk of sounding immodest, we're really good at this. You would not be here if we didn't know that you have the talent to be able to thrive here academically if you apply yourself, to be a leader on campus, to finish this degree, and to go on and shine as a future Baruch alumnus or alumna. We know that you can do this. It will not always be easy. Today, you'll hear from a whole lot of members of the SEEK staff, and they are extraordinarily devoted to helping you succeed. Rely on them, reach out to them. When they reach out to you, respond to them. They are valuable partners in your journey. Look around the screen, you can't see too many folks now because we're screen sharing, but, but when everybody's back on, these students who are strangers now are soon to be your classmates. And eventually some of them are going to be your friends. They will study all night with you. They will listen to your doubts. They will celebrate your successes. Someday they will dance at your wedding or they'll introduce you to the person who helps you get your first big promotion. They can be your lifeline if you let them. This Sikh community really can and does exist, and I truly hope that you embrace that possibility. Today, you're going to hear from a lot of information, and you're going to hear from a lot of people. If you don't have a pen and paper with you, I would suggest you grab one now, because even if it doesn't seem relevant, you're going to want to write stuff down, because you'll want to remember it later. This afternoon is for you. It's for you to get the information that you want and you need to get your questions answered and to really start to be a part of the Baruch community, a part of the Sikh community. And I'm really, again, so happy to be here with you, to congratulate you, and to welcome you to our family. Thanks. Thank you, VP Gorman. And I would like to now introduce our Deputy Seat Director, Ms. Betty Duvige. Thank you, Christy, and thank you, Mary. Um, Mary stressed about the word community. You are part of this community and welcome future Bearcats. Like you are a future alum, I'm a proud Baruch alumna of the class of 1995. That was some time ago. The Seat program is really part of this legacy. 
a legacy that was first about providing access that has now been a, a legacy of success. Established as a very comprehensive academic support program, we offer instru instructional, financial, and counseling support services to our students, really designed to meeting the challenges of college and, and help you to succeed in a, very in a very supportive environment. And we do that as a team and as a community. I'm happy to share a bit about the history of the SEEK program with you. You could go to the next slide, may I saw? This is a legacy of not only advocacy, but deeply rooted on social and, and educational equity. We hear a lot about social injustices. Our program is really rooted in that philosophy. And we are gonna be celebrating within CUNY 56 years of SEEK. In 1964, the College Discovery Program was established at the City University of New York as part of the community colleges. A year later in 1965, the Percy Sutton Seek Program was established at the City College of New York, CCNY, as a pre-baccalaureate program as a direct result of the actions of students like yourselves, staff activists, visionaries, and progressive political leaders as you see right here, our very own Percy E. Sutton. I'll tell you a bit about him in a moment. The New York State legislators proposed this unprecedented legislation that was eventually signed as a law on July 5th, 1965. Among them were the bold and ambitious Shirley Chisholm, you could go to the next slide now, Saul, who was the first black woman elected to the US Congress. She represented the 12th Congressional District in Bedford-Stuyvesant, maybe some of you are from that area, and of, is of parents from the Caribbean. She was the first African-American candidate on a major party's nomination for president of the United States. She's pictured here with the peace sign. I'm hoping many of you know, of course, who she was. She's often said signing that Sikh legislation was the single most important legislation that she signed. And of course, leading the way was our very own Percy E. Sutton, a modern day Renaissance man, who was a civil rights movement activist, a lawyer, a lawyer of Malcolm X, a politician, of course, TV and radio um, executive, including what we may, many of us know, owner of the Apollo Theater. C. CUNY would become the very first state mandated higher education opportunity program. Our very own program at Baruch was established in 1968 here on the Baruch campus. That very same fall semester, the college became an independent college as part of the City University of New York. And on July 2010, a New York State bill was passed to rename Seek, the SEEK program as the Percy Ellis Sutton program. And on October 12, 2011, to commemorate this naming, a celebration was held at the City College of New York, where the SEEK program, of course, was birthed. Our very own SEEK um, alum, Jeffrey McClellan, was a member of the UMLA program. The first student, one of the first students of the incoming class of 2010 was the keynote speaker for that event. For over 55 years, we have been transforming the lives of generations of New Yorkers and their families, hence, Graduates like you all, future graduates of the program, continue to contribute to the economic and social well being of New York State and the landscape of higher education, education in general, business, industry, and government. CUNY SEEK and CD program were the first education, educational programs within this country. And as a result, we have pioneered many innovative higher education practices that are common, like block programs where all of you are gonna be placed into courses as a cohort to help you as you transition to college. Providing holistic counseling and advising practices in a rigorous academic support program, which you're gonna hear about soon from our very own David Rosen. Recognizing this need for this program within SUNY, within CUNY, SUNY system also instituted their program in 1965, led by the efforts of New York State Assembly author Eve. Securing funds for SUNY students, naming their program EOP, and eventually some um, um, independent private colleges calling them HEOP. 
And eventually in 1968, similar programs were founded in New Jersey called EOF, multiple acronyms, but same mission, the mission of providing access and also succeeding, having our students succeed. That last picture you see here is our very own Jabil Jallo, a recent modern day social activist who's an alum, who's also now part of the legacy. We're looking forward to you being part of this continued legacy and I'm so happy to welcome you here. History is important. It helps us to know where we are coming from and where we hope to go. Welcome future Bearcats. Now I'm gonna turn it over to David. He's gonna talk a little bit about our summer program. Thank you so much, Betty. Congratulations everyone on graduating high school. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's an amazing feat. You did it, you did it, you did it. And now you're gonna do this uh, because the journey never ends. You know, you've, in, you've succeeded, you, you've done great things and the journey continues. All of our journeys continue. And um, you're gonna join us on this part of your journey now. So you are the second online summer program cohort. Our summer program is entirely online. And, and as Betty said, you know, the history informs the present and, and, and that will shape the future. So I urge you all to, you know, uh, invest in your present to shape the future you want for yourself and for everyone around you. You have that power. I, I urge you all to embrace this opportunity, dive in, and we're gonna dive into the summer. It's where it all starts. And let me tell you a bit about that. Um, basically, I'm gonna talk about some requirements and expectations for the summer. And, and then as we enter the fall, homework, attendance, your college career begins now. You should be engaged. Sometimes you may struggle. We are here to support you. So let me get into some details. Uh, let's see now. You are, you are registered for the Summer Academy on CUNY First and you will get a pass or fail grade. Uh, if, if you don't complete the summer program, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to get a grade of R and you cannot attend Baruch in the fall. We would support you in finding an institution that would, might, that would be a better fit for you. However, I do want to say this. If you are in an immersion class or a credit class and you don't pass that class, that doesn't mean you won't pass the summer program itself. So let me say that one more time. The, the SEEK summer program is its own program. You have to pass that. We're going to check attendance. We're going to ask you to do work. I'll explain about that in a moment. If you're also in an immersion class, I'll get to all the questions. Hold, hold the questions for one minute until, until I finish, then we'll take questions. Um, if you're also in an immersion class or a credit class, yes, we want you gonna to have to attend as part of our summer program. But at the same time, if you don't pass math immersion, that doesn't mean you won't be able to attend Baruch in the fall, but the summer, the SEEK summer program, yes, you must pass it. Can you pass it? Yes. Will we support you in passing it? Yes. Will you need to attend? Yes. Will you need to do your work? Yes. Uh, and and we'll, we'll get into some details. So if you can go to the next slide, Marissa. So expectations, we, we want you to meet us halfway. We have expectations of you, you have expectations of us. We're gonna meet you right in the middle. You're gonna deliver and we're gonna deliver for you and, and we're gonna come out in a better place. Okay, again, pass fail. You must attend the sessions and complete all work required. I am simultaneously going through my PowerPoint because I have some notes on mine. Okie dokie. So there are four main SEEK workshops. So again, the SEEK summer program, what does that consist of? It consists of a few things and a few different options. I, I, I'll try not to go too long, but I do want to share with you the different possibilities of what your summer will look like. And I see some of the questions uh, being answered. Thank you. Uh, but we're going to get to all that. Uh, I want to answer these questions, but I, I want to start with uh, what everybody's doing. So no matter what of the different possibilities you're in, which mostly depend on math placement. Again, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, everyone is also doing certain things. There are certain things that are required from everyone, uh, in no matter what. And, and that it would be the SEEK, the four main SEEK workshops. So when we say you must do all the work for the SEEK program, this is the majority of that. There are some other things like tutoring, uh, but this is the, and, and counseling check-ins, but, but this is the main thing. The four main workshops, you're gonna to have to do the work. This is all designed to help you succeed in college. What is your why? What does that mean? What is your why? Well, what is your why? And, and you'll have a chance to meet the leaders uh, hopefully uh, later. Um, 
What is your why? Why are you in college? What inspires you? What motivates you? What drives you? What gives you that intrinsic motivation to achieve and, and to put one foot in front of the other, even when it is hard? So what is your why? Why do you do what you do? That's what that's about. Getting connected. B big part of college, get connected. Don't do what I did when I was 17. I went to school, went home, went to school, although we're online. I went to school, went home. Went to, I didn't join a club. Do not make the same mistake. I did get connected because it's going to enhance everything uh, from the academics to the personal to the networking, getting connected. It, it was the biggest mistake I made and I didn't get as connected as I should. I urge you all, don't make that same mistake. Get connected. We'll talk about that in that workshop. Emotional intelligence. I see Monica in below. I can only see a few, but uh, you know, um, we have Katie, Monica, who have developed this wonderful workshop. Emotional intelligence. You might say, why? Um, what, what, what does that have to do with anything? I'm here for school. Well, <laughs> you are going to feel emotions. Uh, I promise you that. And when you do, you're going to need to to know how to handle them. You're going to need to know how to share them and work through them as it relates to your college journey okay so emotional intelligence extremely important extremely important again it's not just about academics we deal with the whole person and honestly that whole person is going to be that person who succeeds it's not just about classes okie dokie finally college readiness uh, general tips strategies suggestion how do i succeed in college Look, for example i would say look at that grade breakdown in every class you're going to take you're going to get a grade breakdown 20% this, 15% that, 30% that. I'm delivering each of those percentages to my professor so you can't fail me. You can't fail me in college. Why? Because I delivered what you asked for. You told me 20% this, 15% that. I gave you all that. How can you possibly fail me? You can't. And I, you know, I've been to grad school too. It's very hard to fail me in a class. Why? Because I've delivered what you asked. That's that's part, small part, that's my, my little Two, two minute speech, college readiness. That's what I'm gonna do. Are you gonna do that? Yes, we're gonna talk about that in college readiness, that among many other things. So that's one example of, of, of something I, I wanted to share with you all, uh, a, a, a tactic. So we go to the next slide. Okie dokie, now I see in the comments, a lot of people say times. Okay, now listen, I'm gonna get, bear with me. I'm gonna get into all the different options. Uh, there's three major options. We're gonna go through all three. Again, they're mostly dependent on your math placement. So bear with me, this will all become very clear as we go. Now, one of the three possibilities is math immersion. That's gonna actually start just the math component itself. If you are in math immersion, and that's about two thirds of you, so do pay attention. If you are in math immersion, I'm going to reach out or your professor will reach out. I'm gonna to try to do both. I'm, I'm contacting the professors right now to coordinate this, but uh, you, you will get, you will be connected by either me, the professor or both, hopefully both, uh, to tell you where you're supposed to be on Zoom starting July 6th. That's folks in math immersion. That is if your math placement is what's called 1030 college algebra, 1030 or below, about two thirds of you are, are in a version of math immersion, meaning your math part will start July 6th. And I saw that in the chat. How will you know? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to, e if you are in math immersion, I'm going to email you Thursday at the latest with where you're supposed to be on Tuesday, July 6th. Monday is a holiday. Okay. So I'm going to reach out to whatever emails we have. Um, if you don't know where to go, let me just throw my email in the chat. Most of you probably have a way to, to uh, you know, see this. But email, if you are, if you don't know where to go by, yes, you will receive a communication on which group you're in for sure. If you don't know where you're supposed to go on, on, on Friday, on, on uh, rather I should say Thursday, July 1st, in terms of immersion, let me know, but I'll reach out if you're in immersion. So don't worry, because many of you won't be contacted because you're not in immersion. So don't, don't panic, but I will reach out to you um, about immersion. If you are in immersion, I will reach out to you and the professor will reach out to you. If you are not in immersion, that's about a third of you. That, that means that your math placement was 2003 or above. And we'll get into all the different schedule possibilities in, in a few minutes. Uh, that's gonna start July 12th. That's when every component of the SEEK program will kick in July 12th. So if you're in math immersion, you're gonna just do math, Tuesday, July 6th, um, Wednesday, Wednesday, July 7th, and Thursday, July 8th. 
you're just going to have the math class, which starts at 11.15 in the morning. Just math. You'll start three days of your math class. Then on the 12th, everything else kicks in. So you will get that schedule um, Thursday, July 8th at the latest. Okay. Ends August 12th. Everything is online. Everything is Monday through Thursday. Now, I'm going to break down all the, all the schedule possibilities soon. But what I want to say to start, you're going to check in with your counselor every day. What time? Either, either 1030 to 11 or 12 to 1230. And I'll break down the schedules in a second. Everyone is also going to be in a letter group. That tells you which of the workshops you're going to attend each day, uh, depending on the time. So I'll, I'll explain that in the schedule. So you're all going to have a letter group and, and, and um, a counselor and also a schedule. So if we go to the next slide. Okie dokie. Also, you're going to meet with your peer mentors Wednesday. So keep your Wednesday afternoon open uh, if, if you're in credit or math prep from 3 to 3.30. And again, I'll email you your specific uh, information. Uh, or if you're in math immersion, it'll be until 4 at the very latest. You will be in one of three different groups, all right? Credit class, math immersion, or math prep. Uh, I will break these down as we go. So we can go to the next slide. Okie dokie. Okay, now look, like I said, about two thirds of you are going to be in immersion. What is the immersion schedule? Okay, now, a, a side note, if you are this, this, this part here, the 1115 part, that's the only part that will start July 6th, if you are in immersion. So if you're in math immersion, the part that will start July 6th is, is, the, is the second row here, the 1115 part. The rest of the schedule will kick in July 12th, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is that your schedule is gonna be this. At 1030, you're gonna check in with your counselor and you have a quick break. Then your immersion math class will start. Again, these are all the levels below um, 2003, 1030 or below. Uh, 1031 is the same as 1030. Then lunch, then your seat workshops, then tutoring, and then on Wednesdays only, you'll meet your mentors. If you're in immersion, I'm going to email you. I will email you this Thursday, if you are in immersion, what to do and where to go. So don't worry about that. I will, I will let you know. So that's the immersion schedule, all right? 10.30 to about 3.15, 3.30. Tutoring is mandatory until 3.15. That'll be also two days a week. So you may get out some days as early as 2.40. Other days, you will get out as late as 4 o'clock especially okay the immersion math class students with a math place in 1030 below will be in immersion math that allows you to advance these immersion classes are not for credit they're past fail and uh oh if somebody can mute uh the, the folks with their mics open that would be helpful um okay students with the math placement of 1030 below will be in an immersion math class that will allow you to advance but is not for credit so you're gonna it's pass fail but it's not um, for college credit okay we can go to the next slide okie dokie so as I said uh, immersion folks in no math uh, math 1023 or math 1030 you will start Tuesday 7-6 from 11-15 to 1-25 every day, Monday through Thursday, and then starting 7-12, you will also have math tutoring twice a week and staying till 3-30 optionally. That's the immersion schedule, okay? Let's go to the next one. Math prep, this is sort of option number two. So if you're not in immersion, which is about two thirds of you, um, you're gonna be in either math prep or a credit class. Now there's not enough credit spots for everyone and some of you did not want a credit class. If you said you didn't want a credit class, we're not gonna put you in it. And there's not enough split spaces for everyone. So math prep is for everyone who is not in a credit class. What will your schedule look like? Well, I will tell you. From 10.30 to 11.30, you're going to have math prep. You're gonna work for an hour preparing for the math class you're gonna take in the fall. That's one hour with our tutors. Lunch break. Then you're going to check in with your counselor, a little different than the prior one. Then again, seek workshops at a different time. Okay, then some study time afterwards. And then on Wednesday, you'll meet your mentors. That's the math prep schedule. It's a little different than the immersion schedule. That, now, I see someone in the comments saying it's only the math class. Now, look, if you're in the math prep, you're going to have the math prep. Um, what, what do you call it? The math prep workshop, right? Notice 
seek workshops that is the bulk of the seek summer program so are you responsible for all these things yes you are responsible for for the math prep workshop where you'll have your tutors working with you and you'll have your counselor check-in which is mandatory you're going to have your mandatory counselor check-in and then you're going to have the seek workshop and then you're going to have the mentors this is all part no there's no english uh, the, you'll do english in the seek workshop so in the seek workshops there will be a, a portion for english yes yeah, so essentially if you are in um the math prep you will be in class from 10 30 till about um depending on the day 1 30 uh, study time afterwards and then uh and meeting your mentors on wednesday that's the math prep schedule we have one more option and uh, let me finish up on math prep this is for students with 2003 placement or above pre-cal or above the placement is automatic from school and 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 that's that's what you will do if you're in that group okay last group the credit class groups. There are three different credit classes. So if you placed into pre-cal or above and you also indicated that you're interested in the credit class and we were able to put you in it, you are gonna be in three possible different credit classes. Now, one of them starts at 8.05 in the morning. Let's go through that schedule first. 8.05 to 10.35, you have your class. I'll, I'll explain what that is in a moment. And you have what's called supplemental instruction. So your class meets three times a week, and you have supplemental instruction on the day that you don't have class. Okay, then lunch, then uh, you'll have some study time and perhaps meeting with the mentors. Then you'll check in with your counselor. This will all be sent to you. Yes, everyone's gonna get their schedule. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize this. This is to get you uh, aware of, of what you're going to see, but you will all get uh, your, your information as to where you're supposed to be for sure. Uh, you will get this. Okay, um, counselor check-in. Then the seek workshops, then some study time and meeting with your mentors. That's what your summer will look like if you're in credit class one. If you're in credit class two, you will have class that starts at 9.05 in the morning on three of the days out of the week. And then on the day that it's not, which is Wednesday, you'll have um, supplemental instruction led by uh, the, the, the tutoring team. Okay, lunch, counselor check-in. Then again, seek workshops. Notice everyone has a seek workshop. Study time. With, with your letter group that will tell you where to go, study time, and then you'll meet your mentors on Wednesday. Third credit class, uh, it starts at nine in the morning, nine to 11.30, supplemental instruction on the off day, which in this case is Monday, lunch, check in with your counselor, and then again, the seek workshops, and then you're gonna meet your mentors. So there's certain elements in common on each of these schedules, seek workshops, meeting with your counselor, meeting with your mentors on Wednesday, and, and then the other elements vary. The, the credit class, the math prep, or the math immersion. We take attendance at everything, and again, we will let you know where to be for sure. And if you are confused, you can always reach out to me, but I will let you know where to go. Don't worry. I, I have to do that, and I will do that, and I want you all to know where you have to go because I need you to know where to go. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, three credit class, you will receive a grade. Now, if you're in the credit class, this is graded. This is an actual class. You have a chance to get some college credits done this summer, which is a wonderful thing. Okay, uh, the, the 805 class is Black and Latino Studies. The 905 AM class is also Black and Latino Studies. Psychology is at 9 AM there, and, and one day is the supplemental instruction section. I'm not gonna be able to place people based on interest. So it, these are all classes that, that we want you to take. And they do, you know, they will be part of your grade point average. So make sure you take it very seriously. People, last summer we did this, people did very well, but work, you have to work hard, you have to do all the work. I, the, the spots are somewhat limited. I'm going to see who I can put in based on a, a various criteria, uh, but but I'm going to try to get every, as many people in it as I can, but you can only be placed in through this. Okay. Our commitment to you. There will be regular evaluations from your instructors and mentors as you progress. We're invested and committed to your success, and we're going to support you throughout this journey. You can always email me if you are confused, but you have a whole team of people who are going to be there. In the credit classes, you have the, the supplemental instruction folks who are also students. You have Ramon Garcia, a doctoral candidate, uh, and the SEEK alum, who's an, an incredible person who'll be there for you. Um, the tutors, the immersion teachers, your tutors. There, there's gonna be, and of course, uh, your counselors uh, are gonna be there as well. And, and you're gonna check in with them every single day. And the peer mentors too. So you have a team. If you're, if you're struggling, reach out to us so we can work with you. 
Okie dokie. Some words you're going to hear, we're, we're still online. So some words that you should know. Synchronous, at like sync, like synced up. Synchronous, at the same time. When people say synchronous, they mean at the same time, usually referring to in-person meetings, such as on Zoom. What we're doing right now is synchronous. I'm talking to you and you're all hearing me at this time. You're talking to me and I'm hearing you at the same time. We are currently in a synchronous meeting. Okay, so this is a synchronous meeting. It's occurring at the same time we're talking. Asynchronous, the prefix a sometimes means not that. Asynchronous, not synchronous, not at the same time, all right? So uh, that means I'm emailing you, hey, send me your homework. You email me an hour later, sure. Three hours later or three days later, here's my homework. One day later, thanks. That's asynchronous. It didn't happen at the same time. We asked you to do something. You did it at a different time and then got it back to us or to your professor. That's asynchronous, not occurring at exactly the same time. Another word that you're gonna hear is hybrid. Hybrid means a mixture of online and in-person. This fall will be mostly uh, a hybrid semester in a sense. You're gonna have some classes that are in-person. You're gonna have some classes that are online. Possibly, I don't, I don't know the proportion exactly each and it will vary for each of you. And you're gonna have some classes which are called Hybrid, what does that mean? Your class is going to be a mixture of in-person online. How much is in-person, how much is online? A lot of that depends on the professor. I see in the chat, apply for fall classes, SEEK registers you for all your fall and spring classes. Uh, we'll talk about AP and College Now credits. You're gonna wanna get those into the college, uh, you know, if you have them, because that can affect your schedule, but we register you. You cannot pick in person or hybrid in the fall because we're going to put you in classes. So this means that if for the immunization, we'll talk about this at the very end, you're going to need to comply with the immunization requirements because that's a requirement for the fall. You, you likely will have some variation of in-person, hybrid, and online in the fall and, and the spring. So definitely make sure you get those in, in uh, immunization requirements done. Okay, we get those cred the credits, AB, IB, International Baccalaureate, and College Now go through the school. We, we get them from the school when you submit them officially to the school. We'll talk about that at the very end. I'll, I'll, I'll take a break and then come back. Okay, so I guess next slide, Maris. Tech tools for the summer. You're going to need to get on Zoom like you are now. You did it, great. There's something called Blackboard. Blackboard is, a, is an online uh, program. You all have access to it. That's where we post course information. You're able to post responses, almost like asynchronously on Blackboard. So we can post something, you can post something that's on Blackboard. You all have access to it once you have your Baruch mail. So most of you have that, many of you have that. If you have not gotten that, watch our tech presentation. Um, and that will explain how to claim your Baruch mail. Many of you have done that. We're going to transition to Baruch mail as we start the summer. So you're going to want to, you're going to learn about Blackboard, but you'll all be enrolled in the Seek Summer Seminar, which is the official name for the summer program, the Seek Summer Seminar. So when you log into Blackboard, you're going to see FYS1, Seek Summer Seminar. All right. That's where you're going to, that's your home base for Black on Blackboard for the Seek Summer program. Hey, Dave, can I, can I jump in to talk a little bit about technology really quickly? Um, again, welcome everyone. My name is Christy Perez and I'm the director of the Seek program. You know, we're, we're all doing this uh, online and virtually and just in all transparency, just so that you know the nature of this beast. Even right before this orientation, my technology and my Wi-Fi went out. And so what do you do in a situation like that, right? Because it happens to all of us, both for students and, and staff and professors. So when, if it, that happens, and I trust me, at some point it, it will happen if it hasn't happened while you were in high school, you get in communication. So what did I do? I contacted members of our team here. We readjusted, and then I used my iPhone for a period of time, right? And so sometimes it can get very frustrating, particularly in this time when we're doing this virtually with everyone, but remember that you have a team of people, both your counselors that you're gonna get a chance to meet with that you stay in communication, the peer mentors that are gonna be introduced so shortly, um, and your fellow classmates, right? So that 
you know, the option isn't, oh, well, well, let me just sign off and then that's it. I'm not going to be able to get back on. It's to be in communication. So I just want you to know that it happens to all of us, right? Um, you know, it happens to me right here out of all days. And you're also living with other people. Like I have a four-year-old that's running around that she may jump in into the call, but it doesn't matter. Meaning we're here, we're together, we're community. And as David had mentioned earlier, we're committed to, to your success. So making sure that you have the technology, all the tech tools that David has outlined. But if you don't, that's cool too, because we'll be able to provide that for you. And then you have communication with Rodolfo and Marisol Morales here. That's our tech people. Um, so we're here to make sure you succeed. But I wanted to mention that because it happens to all of us. And so, you know, so that you know that there's nothing wrong with that when it does, you just be in communication. So thank you, Dave. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to comment on one thing I saw about the fall, uh, the immunization. Listen, this requirement, we're not going to be able to give you an all online schedule this fall. Uh, unless Krista correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I am 99.999% sure that's not an option. I'm just, uh, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. I'm just telling you the, the reality that your fall schedule, as I said, is going to be a mixture of in-person, online, some online and hybrid, but we're not going to be able to get you a fully uh, online schedule this fall. So please, uh, you know, you, you, you will need to complete those requirements uh, that are the school's requirements. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Also, yes, we are going to be able to, uh, the school can provide you with technology as well. You will be responsible for it, but we're going to send you a form that you can use to order technology. So um, there, I also mentioned real quick, there's something called Navigate. You'll learn more about that as you connect with your counselor. That's a, another system uh, online that allows us to, to see how you're doing and things of that nature and, and just sort of your, your record in the system. Okay, you can email technology questions to the main seek email or Rodolfo. You'll meet Rodolfo. Rodolfo is another tech wizard uh, who is another seek alum and a seek graduate, a wonderful person who, who is also going to be able to help you all summer. Yes, we do. You're going to be able to talk uh, to your counselor about if you're if you already took a class and you're waiting for the AP credit, you're going to have a chance to look at your summer to your, your fall schedule during the summer. So early August, you'll be able to see your fall schedule. If there's any issues or problems, yes, you can talk about it. If you have work conflicts, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to prioritize your college education. I understand people need to work. People, You are invested. Okay. But your college education must come first. You're not going to be able to work 73 hours a week. It's not going to work. Uh, you're going to need to go to school full time. And you are going to work uh, part time. You know, anything over 20 hours is going to interfere with your education. I say that's generally understood in college. I would recommend even less. In that, you're going to make so much more money in your lifetime with your degree. Invest in yourself now. There is no part time job that you can take now that will give you the same uh, profit, the same, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The same um, outcome of your investment. There's a word for that. The same outcome for your investment, payoff uh, uh, that, that, you're, that you'll get when you have your degree. So, so take this time now. You're, we're not going to be able to alter your fall schedule because you have a job. So you're going to have to talk with any employers you have about this. Okay. So, you know, and in the summer, we're Monday through Thursday. We're not going to be able to alter summer or, or fall schedules for, for a job. Okay. I would urge you all to speak to folks now. And, and honestly, any employer that that I'll say cares about you will understand that and will support you in that many employers want you to, to go to college and, and succeed. So really they should alter their schedule to, to accommodate your an investment in you, which is extremely important. I, I would be uncomfortable working for someone who didn't uh, care about my undergraduate education. Uh, so especially the age you all are most 99% of you are, Okay, we're not going to be able to change that stuff. Okay, so moving on. Zoom etiquette. Urge you all, get that. We'll, we'll send you the instructions. Rodolfo created the instructions. We'll get it to you soon of how to put that picture up. Put that picture up. So when your professor sees you, they'll see you. 
and not just the name. It's a nice touch to, to have and it's a, uh, in this uh, situation. Okie dokie, keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking, use your reaction icons. This is just general Zoom etiquette. Stay connected to your to professors and folks. Keep, uh, say hello, you know what I'm saying? Uh, keep in touch, that will enhance your college experience greatly. And then when there's a problem, you'll already have a relationship. Okay, so writing assessment. Many people have emailed me about the writing assessment. Seek is sending you our own writing assessment. I'm sorry for any confusion about this, but we're going to reach out to you soon, uh, pretty soon actually, with your Seek writing assessment. You have an hour to take it. Once you begin, don't log off. Take it in one shot. You're going to need to log into Blackboard to take it. So see how all these things are connected. Claim your Baruch mail and attempt to access Blackboard, the FYS1 seek summer seminar, which is the summer program. You have to complete this before July 8th. Okay, this is mandatory, not taking it, ignoring this will absolutely interfere with your ability to complete the summer program. This is just the very start. This is mandatory. If you don't take it, you're, you're, you're letting us know we're, we're not sure you know, if you want to be here or not. If you've already taken it, I don't know if that's on the next slide, but I'll, I'll say it now. If you've already taken it, that was an error. You're gonna have to take it again through our uh, system. If we can access the old one, we'll, we'll see if we can do that. But to be on the safe side, take it when we send it, take the seek version, okay? Yes, if you took, I apologize if, if you took it, just take it, take it again. It's, it's not, it was light, it was not so bad. It's not so bad. And it's just to see if you're in an extended English time. Do your best, don't worry too much about it. The summer book. Okay, so every summer there is a book. Um, this year it is The World According to Fanny Davis. She is a Baruch author. Uh, Bridget Davis is a, is a Baruch professor. There is a discount. If you use the discount code, it's $6.99. We urge you all to get it and read it. Uh, can, I, can I jump in really quickly, Dave? I'm sorry. So the summer book is for all first year Baruch college students. So whether you're in SEEK or not, all incoming first year Baruch college students are reading the summer book, um, which is the, the writer and the author is an actual professor here on campus. So I just want to clarify that. Also, one thing that I didn't get a chance to articulate um, earlier why I made my greetings was our program, the SEEK program here at Baruch, just so you can understand the context, outperforms the general student group, you know, population, meaning our graduation rates are higher of Baruch college students here. So I'm noticing a lot of folks may feel a certain kind of way about um, our summer program and or the rationale as to why we do what we do. And I just want to know, let you know that historically, for many, many years, our students outperform the general college students. Our SEEK program has the numbers and outcomes higher than, the, than all other SEEK programs within the CUNY system. And when our students graduate as Baruch College students, those of you that go into variety of uh, career sectors, which is many of you why you're choosing this particular institution, um, their salary earnings, as, as what Dave had mentioned, um, is high. So we recognize that this summer is going to require a lot. It's a shift. Um, many of you made a choice uh, to pursue your education here. Um, but I just want to stress the fact that you made the right choice in choosing Baruch College as well as our program because, as David had mentioned, our outcomes are extremely high. So the investment that you're making now for yourselves will continue to pay off. And I'm sure that some of our mentors as well as our counselors in the breakout rooms can speak to that a little bit more. Um, so we recognize that again, a lot of this may seem a, a little bit overwhelming, um, but just know that we have a formula that works. So thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, Christy. Absolutely. You know, we wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be asking you to do this if, if we didn't truly believe with all of our hearts that this is what will help you succeed in the fall. And, and also this is giving you a little taste of what the fall is going to look like. Are, are your professors going to ask you to work? Yes. Are we going to ask you to work? Yes. And, and will you do a great job? Yes. But you're going to have to, like I said, you're going to meet us halfway. We'll meet you halfway. Okay. Or more, you can meet us more than halfway. Anyway, enough out of me. I've gone on 
way too long. Let's turn it over to our wonderful counselor, Rebecca Quaino, so she can introduce you to the peer mentors. I'll, I'll pop in for a minute towards the end. It was wonderful to meet you all. Email me any questions and we'll, we'll talk more. I see a lot of questions in the chat, but uh, uh, you can all reach out anytime. Nice to meet you all, Susan. Thank you, David. Thank you so much, David. Such great information that you share with our amazing students. So welcome everyone. As David mentioned, my name is Rebecca Quino and I am one of the seat counselors here to support you. I'm so excited to be here with you this afternoon and I'm so looking forward to meeting all of you. I will be assigned to, I will be assigned as one of your counselors and as many of our counselors and support team has already mentioned, we are here to support you. We are here because we care about you and we care about your success. So without further ado, at this time, I want to introduce you to some of our amazing peer mentors who are also going to support us and support you throughout your journey throughout the summertime and also throughout your first year here at college. So you are in good hands. So now, peer mentors, if you are here in the room, please use the emoji and wave so that our students can see you. All right, and again, students, you will have the opportunity to meet the peer mentors as David mentioned and as our director has mentioned during the workshops, right? You'll have check-in times with our peer mentors and they're gonna tell you all that you need to know in addition to your check-ins with your seat counselor. At this time now, I would like to introduce you to our president for one of our clubs here on campus called Women in Power for Success, Carolina. You may take the floor now. Hi, everyone. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Congratulations on getting accepted to Baruch College. I remember when I was in your shoes and I was so happy to be a Baruch student. Um, so I'm here to tell you a little bit about West. So we are an empowerment group targeted to encourage social change around the narrow um, perceptions of women. And we aim to uplift our members in order to enable them to step out of their comfort zones. And we host events and we make sure that we have a good impact in the Sikh community and just empower women. But this a club is not just for women. Um, men are also welcome to join us. So um, just for the sake of time, if anybody wants to join Wes, please join us. And we are more than happy to accept anybody who wants to be a member of our club. And it's really good to be involved in campus and stuff like that. So yeah. Once again, congratulations. Bye, everyone. And I think now we're going to have an opportunity to meet our SEEK staff. So for those of you that are here, um, if you can, I'm just going to call you as I see you. And if I miss anyone, um, my apologies, and you can just jump off the mic. So we know who Dave, um, who spoke, and the Deputy Director, Betty Dubouget. Um, Matthew, would you like to say hello? Yeah, sure. Hey, everybody. My name is Matthew McCack. I also go by Melissa McCack. Uh, my pronouns are he and she, and I'm excited to meet all of you. Thank you. Matthew. We got the privilege to meet Rebecca, um, and I'm just going to screen here. Um, then we also have Sashe. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sasha Pimentel. I'm one of the SEEK advisors here, as well as the peer mentor coordinator, and I'm a proud SEEK alum as well. So welcome, and we're really excited to have you all here. Awesome, thank you. And Monica, who has been very active on the chat, uh, say hello. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to meet all of you. I know that there is so much in the room and the feeling, but trust me, we got you and you got it and we will be there along the way. Thank you. And we have Sasha, who also runs our Urban Male Leadership Academy Scholars Program, which Deputy DeVige shared earlier about one of our students who was a member of the inaugural cohort. Sasha? Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm Sasha Penziales, the seat counselor. 
uh, Baruch alum, not a Sikh alum, sadly, I, although I wish I was part of Sikh. Um, I'm really excited to meet you all. I love what I do. Love to get to know the students. I'm hoping that you guys are excited for school. And if you're not and you're starting, you know, you're, you're going to get used to reaching out to us because that's the whole point and the benefit of being in Sikh. So welcome. Thank you. And then we have Christina, um, who does our marketing magic and all our social media and a, and a lot of creative um, projects for us. Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm currently a marketing assistant with the SEEK program, and I am also a proud Baruch SEEK alumna. I graduated recently in December 2020, and I just want to say congratulations to everyone for making it, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you for being here. And Marisol, do you want to say hello? I can't see you on my screen, but I know you're, you're working the magic behind the scenes. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Marisol Morales, and I am the tech person for the SEEK program. Um, so I am working magic behind the scenes. I'm the one moving the PowerPoint along. And throughout the summer program, I'll be helping with any tech-related um, issues. And if you have any questions, um, you could always email me. My name is Marisol Morales. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to meet you all and hope you have a great summer. And then we have Rodolfo, who also works a lot of our technical magic, um, also part of the UMLA when he was a student here. Rodolfo, you want to share anything? Hello, everyone. My name is Rodolfo. Uh, I graduated in December of 2018, and I'm the tech assistant along with uh, working with Marisol to help you out what any needs for the for the summer. Thank you, Rodolfo. Did I miss anyone? I'm going through, if I have, please feel free to get off uh, audio and introduce yourself. Okay. So now I turn it over to Dave. Thanks, Christy. I think uh, Sasha, uh, are you up now? Yes, I am. I was waiting, I'm like, okay. Sorry. Uh, but thank you, David. Uh, so as Christy uh, explained, I am a co-lead uh, for the Urban Male Leadership Academy. Uh, basically what this program is, is for um, young men of color who are admitted into the SEEK program. Um, what I had notes, give me a second. Uh, I can't find them. <laughs> this is me all the time. So if you happen to have me as a counselor or be in the human lay, get used to it. Um, so the UMLA's goal is to empower and support young men of color um, by guiding them through their academic and professional career, um, career in college. So first and foremost, as Dave mentioned earlier, I think the UMLA is a great way to connect with your peers, especially for young men of color, because on average, you the this uh, statistically speaking, there's not a high graduation rate or retention rate within college. So this is a program that's aiming to help you be better, do better, and we're here to guide you along the process. And you get to make friends because you're going to have peer mentors, you're going to have trainings with them, you're going to be in discussions with them on Saturdays. Um, as part of being in the UMLA, you are expected to take a BLS course, whether you start taking it this summer or you take it it within your first year of college. Um, so just for time's sake, I'm just gonna talk about what we are doing this summer. If you are interested in anything I just said, even if it's just connection, um, I know that a lot of the guys have been receiving emails and I completely understand that maybe it's just easier to just not engage with an email, but if you're interested in like finding community or you just interested in learning more about the, the actual program, this Thursday, we're going to have an orientation at 4.30 p.m. Myself and the other code lead, Andrew Lawton, who's not here today, we're going to be leading it. We're going to be answering more questions, explaining what it is that we do more in depth. If you're still curious, next week on Friday, we're going to be starting the first of three sessions where we're going to be um, just showing you guys the kinds of conversations you'll be having if you're part of the UMLA and you actually get to meet continuing students who are part of the UMLA already and alumni, which is another benefit of the UMLA because these students, just as Jeffrey McCullen was mentioned, they're already working, they're already doing what it is that you think you might want to do. So it's worth having uh, connections as well. So if you have any questions, my email is on the PowerPoint. I can write it in the chat. And if you are interested, please come to the orientation on Thursday.
Marisol, am I back? Okay, wait, no, I'm sorry. Sasha, are you gonna cover this one too or no? I'm gonna I'm gonna go and cover that oh, one. I'm sorry, Sasha. No, no worries. So of course we have Sasha and Sasha. We get mixed up all the time and we are both great. So that's no problem. Um, so these are just a few things that you need to know. So a few of you have been asking questions about transfer credits, college now, advanced placement. And I'm going to put the link on the chat. So you actually have to go through the college and make sure that the college officially receives all AP College Now credits that you have coming in. Um, in the link that I'm going to put on the chat, you would have all the instructions on the pages. Um, you can always, you know, just Google Baruch AP College Now and the first link should be what comes up. Um, but if you do need any extra support or assistance, you can always email um, these two email addresses below and you definitely get support assistance um, and doing that. So we'll put these links on the chat for you. Um, and if you have any questions, please let us know as well. Uh, also financial aid, financial aid is very, very important as you know, you've been connecting with financial aid, submitting your documents or anything like that. Please make sure you're reaching out and directing your questions to Carlton Marshall. He is the one that works with us directly and make sure in your communication of Carlton, you're including your name and your Ample ID. Very, very important. You wanna put your name and your Ample ID and make sure you are sending that email through your Baruch email, okay? So that way he can respond to you quickly and efficiently with that personal information. And that is the email that you're writing it to, okay? So fasseek at baruch.cuny.edu. So that is for any of your financial aid questions. And I'm going to turn it back over to David, who's going to talk a little bit about the seed contract and immunization. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you so much, Sasha and Sasha. Okay, a few more things. I want to say before anything else, I do want to say, so as I was going through the chat and I saw something that made me feel kind of, sad, you know, about the immunization requirement that, you know, you don't have a choice. Listen, this is the, this is CUNY's requirement, okay? Um, this isn't our requirement, this is for CUNY. Uh, I urge you all to stay updated on from the CUNY website about the latest coronavirus requirements, the latest vaccine requirements. If anything changes, it, it, it will, in, in, in any ch official change will be posted on the CUNY website. If it's on the CUNY website, it's official. This is where it stands now. If the Supreme Court says you can't do it, that then could lead to an official change. Currently, this is what it is. I, I am sorry, I don't, I, I'm sorry if people are upset. I noticed in the chat, it seemed like some people were not happy, but but again, this is the CUNY requirement and then it's it's something um, that, that, that I urge you all to consider. Uh, okay, seek contract, other info. Be sure to complete the seat contract. Dave, can I just jump? Sorry, please, please. Mm -hmm. Can I just jump into what you said? If there are any issues or concerns, I mean, that's why you have. And I, I saw it also where one of the privileges of being in our program is you have a seat counselor. That is, you have this entire summer to start having conversations and scheduling appointments with your seat counselors and talking about any concerns that you have. As David had mentioned, CUNY has this policy that if you want to be on campus right, that you must be vaccinated. If that is not an option for you for medical reasons or religious reasons or anything like that, there are going to be some exemptions. We just have not received those guidelines yet. And so we're going to be giving you information as we receive them. Additionally, this is not just the trends of CUNY. Many institutions across the country are doing this as we share a lot, you know, the same space and environment. So, but again, it's important, yes, if you have questions, if you have doubts, if you have concerns, as I mentioned earlier, one of the privileges is that we need to be in communication. What sets you apart from the general student population is that you have access to people, direct access. So be in communication, get those questions answered. If there are concerns, be in communication with your counselor. Um, so we want to encourage those questions, just making sure that as we get the information, we're giving it to you. That's how we are, at what, what our practice is, that as we receive information, we share with you and vice versa, as you receive, because there are moments when students receive information before we even receive it, right? So as we are building this partnership for the next four years, um, let's continue the dialogue um, and remain in, in touch with one another, right? Thank you.
Absolutely. Thank you, Christy. Um, I'm, we're going to email you the contract and the intake form. Don't worry, you haven't gotten it yet. We're going to email you an intake form saying, hey, we need some information about you. The very important, especially the AP credit uh, part. Take it seriously. Fill it out carefully. That's the intake form, which should take 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, the contract, review it. It has some key points that, that we want you to agree to. We'll send that to you as well. Keep checking your email, begin that transition to your Baruch mail. There will be also a part, this may be a little, there may be, there may be a part two of the intake form that also will come after part one. Um, try to get the intake form done once we send it, I would say by ideally July 6th, uh, if not July 8th or so around then. Uh, I would urge you all to knock it out when when you get it. Listen, and I saw last thing, I saw a lot of people in the chat. When am I going to get your summer schedule? I am going to email all of you your summer schedule. If you are in the immersion, I will email you this Thursday to say, hey, here's where you're supposed to be on July 6th. Uh, if, if I don't have the Zoom, I'm trying to get the Zoom information now. If I don't have it, I will connect you to the professor and to the people who will have it. Uh, I'll just say this name now. This may not mean anything to you yet, but, there, but if you're in immersion, the people who administer immersion are, are it was called the SAC Center. SAC is the tutoring center for the school. So they're going to be controlling those sections. So uh, they may be looped in when I reach out to you about immersion. Uh, if I don't have the Zoom information, I will connect you to people who will have it. And I'll also get you your professor's name. I'm attempting to get the Zoom information as we speak. But uh, you will be told if you are in a class that starts Tuesday, July 6th, I will tell you. If you don't get an email from me, that means you are not in it. Uh, if you get if, if you're added late, I'll get that information to you as soon as possible. But the vast majority, if not all of you, will get that immersion information Thursday, uh, this Thursday, about next Tuesday. Any follow-ups, I'll send it. If you don't get anything, don't panic. You can ask if you want, but then most likely if you don't get anything, you are either in a credit class or math prep, and you will get your schedule from me on July 8th. Thursday, July 8th, one week from this Thursday. Okay, so don't panic. You will be told where to go. You can always email. I know it may be overwhelming. Uh, college does involve a lot of, of juggling and figuring out um, what, where to go next. Again, you are supported. You can always email me or anyone. We'll also will have a, a team of people who will be able to tell you where to go as well. But for now, I'm still putting everything together. So just reach out. I'll tell you everything you need to know and and don't panic don't worry a lot of colleges putting one foot in front of the other i know these things can be very overwhelming don't be overwhelmed just keep following up and if you have any questions reach out but if you keep putting one foot in front of the other you're going to be okay and that's a lot of college that goes for when we go back to grad school i'm in your shoes i'm at the orientation like hmm this is a lot okay but you know what I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other and everything is going to be okay. You also will do the same. Okay, uh, let's see. Next slide, immunization. Now look, Baruch also had a prior immunization requirement, measles, mumps, rubella. All that information has to go to undergraduate admissions. This is standard for all colleges and grad schools. Uh, as everyone needs to do this. Uh, submit your forms to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, not us, we cannot accept those forms. Uh, check the website, the admissions is website for details, instructions and medical records at baruch.cu with, with any questions and check the coronavirus main page for latest updates on COVID vaccine requirements. If anything changes, they will be there or if there's any updates. And I think now we're going to go to breakout rooms. I think if people have questions, uh, I will then, I think Rodolfo is going to set those up. Or Rodolfo, how are you doing with that? Sorry if that's a shock to you. <laughs> Rodolfo, do you need a minute? A few minutes, yeah. A few minutes, okay. Christy, should we maybe take some questions or go through the chat or, or, or do you want to say anything or does anyone? Want I to think, I think let's look at some questions. We see some folks have some questions. So um, I'm going to go through the chat. So if you see anything or in the team, if you see any questions, feel free to, to start addressing them um, as we wait for the breakout room. Fall semester starts late August, like I believe August 27th or so. 
around there. Yeah, I, I, I saw it, I think fall started August 25th. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You should get your immunization stuff in as soon as you can. Listen, the summer program is online. So you have that window. You do have the buffer of the summer, but when the, you want all this stuff in before the fall, I've, I've been, I've had to scramble around in the last second trying to get, take, do it soon. You know, for the, the regular immunization and, and, the, and the COVID, you know? So, so undergraduate admissions handles that. We can't accept those forms. So you, you can reach out to the medical records email um, as, as well. For, for that, I would urge you to get your immunization requirements completed as early as possible. That's standard for all colleges require that. Summer book is optional. Sorry, Marisol. <laughs> summer, the summer book is, is recommended, unless Christy, do you want to? Yeah, so the summer, so all incoming first year students are required to read the summer book. Um, I know that students are going to be given a discount code. I don't know, David, if you're going to be sending that out to students. Um, and so that will be for the start of the fall 2021 semester. So you have until the start of the semester um, to, to get the book and read it before the start. Um, so the summer book, what's the title again, Dave? We can put the picture up from the PowerPoint if we want. Um, you don't need the physical book. There's audio, audiobooks, there's uh, Kindle, there's all kinds of ways to, to get it. And like I said, most of you know more than what we do. Um, and someone just posted that there is some place you can actually get it for free in the chat, possibly. Leanna, I see you have your hands raised. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask if, do we need to submit the meningitis form? I was seeing that on my student center um, the, the, I mean, the CUNY First Student Center, and I'm not sure where to submit that meningitis form. Do I need to go to my primary doctor or like, how does that work? I'm just a little confused. Yes, great question, Leanna. So yes, you do have to. So aside from COVID, now that we're going onto campus, this is historically in all colleges across the country, there is a vaccination form and meningitis um, is one of the vaccinations that folks have to get. So you would have to go to your primary doctor to get the records, you know, the, and they just sign off the form. Um, Dave, do we have the link to where the immunizations form can be sent? I think Sasha just put it in, I mean, oh. Sasha, someone put in the chat and we're gonna put it in a moment. Yeah, so, and so then on that form, you just take it to your physician, they've completed, they verify that you uh, received that vaccination. Um, it was submitted um, at the undergraduate admissions office. They have a website, but email medical records at baruch.cuny.edu. Um, you could also send us an email at seek at baruch.cuny.edu to ask if there's a link again. Thank you, Dave. Um, and then you just um, sent it that way because historically this is COVID aside, there were other vaccinations that students needed to take prior to coming onto campus. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Taking a look through the chat, uh, let's see. Um, I also have another question, if you don't mind me going. Um, the school ID, like our, t our actual ID, are, are we going to get an email receiving like what day should we go to take the picture? They're going to tell you. The, I, I asked the ID center and they said they're going to contact you before the fall. That's what they told me. Before fall, okay. Yeah, they're going to contact because you're going to need it until the fall anyway. So like they're going to, they, they said they're going to reach out to you. Because okay. I think also they're going to have to navigate how, how they like bring people in. They, there may be appointments, for example. So they're going to control that. Okay, thank you. If you already, right, so this orientation um, is, is just the only orientation you have to attend as a SEEK student. So if you got invited to a different orientation from the college, our orientation goal is much more comprehensive, meaning very detail specific as to our program, as well as um, goes into the summer program. So you do not have to attend any other orientation after this. 
I see some questions about is the summer program every day? It's every day, Monday through Thursday, every day, Monday through Thursday. What if you have to miss a Zoom appointment? I urge you just send me a quick email. Just if I was out, I'm gonna email Christy. Hey, Christy, I have a doctor's appointment. Do the same. Say, hey, Dave. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I want to also reiterate that this is also the start of your college experience and also you're not fully admitted into the successful completion of this program. So this summer program, in addition, some of you are going to be taking credit bearing courses. So those of you that are registered for that or will be registered for that, you're taking a college credit course. So you have to get a passing grade and obviously you want B and above. Um, and so that will factor in into your GPA. So you'll be starting your GPA. For those of you that are not in a college uh, uh, credit course, you're still doing the requirements of this program, whether through via immersion or the math preparation course with the addition of the summer component of our program. You have to successfully complete that, which includes attendance and submitting your the work that you are gonna be responsible for doing. Um, every other week or every three weeks or so, the professors and the counselors send me um, a evaluation on how students are doing academically. The first conversation, if you're someone that's highlighted is, is having some challenges, the first conversation with me is really to have a check-in, like what's going on, because there might be, you know, valid reasons as to things that are hindering your performance. It may not be academically based. It may be you're navigating, you know, multiple things in the household. You're having, as I had, Wi-Fi challenges, things like that. We're in communication. So then we have a conversation about how we can best support you and we come up with resolving that issue. And we do that all the time. I've been doing this. The team has been doing this for many years, even through the COVID. This is our second summer of doing it online. We have successfully done it, done it. And prior to COVID, we've successfully been able to support students. So it's not the first time that we have students that have to work. We, we support them through that. It's not the first time that students have issues at home. We support them through that. It's not the first time that students are struggling academically because the college environment is, I mean, it's just, it is different. Even for the STAR students, the college workload is very different. So we work with you. The second conversation after we put in interventions then becomes, is this the place you want to be? It's, we're never in a space of trying to like have you opt out. It's more of like, is this really where you want to be? Because again, as David and other members of the team have iterated, our commitment is that you successfully graduate. Our graduation rate is high within our program. It outperforms the graduation of the new college students. And that is because we're invested in that if your commitment is to graduate, that becomes our commitment. If your commitment becomes something else, then we'll support you in that as well, right? So it's a constant back and forth and having a conversation. So all that to say is that in order for you to be enrolled with us in the fall, you have to successfully complete the summer program, right? So I just wanted to make sure that that, that was understood. Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, Rodolfo, how are we doing with the breakout rooms? Are we uh, uh, are, are we in a position to, to break people out? Uh, almost. Almost. So Liana had another question. I'm um, sorry, uh, but I just do I talk to like about my direct deposit or financial aid with someone specific or FASC. I'll put that back in the email. That, that's all your financial aid questions. You should always yes. loop in. You can always CC me or, or really uh, your, once you have a counselor. But in the summer, I, I could be a good sort of filter person if you want someone from Seek on it. But like that's the main financial aid email. That's going to go to Carlton Marshall who works with us. But it is good. Like if you have a summer counselor, it would be smart to put them on it to, once you have a summer counselor. Until then, put, you can yeah. put me on it. But, so um, for now, I'll leave specific questions to my counselor or I'll email. Okay, perfect. Correct. Yes. Right. And just as an FYI, Liana, as you mentioned that part of um, the privilege of coming into the SEEK program is that students do get financial support, financial aid, whether through federal aid, uh, which is Pell, or TAP, which is the state aid. At the end of the summer, historically, one successfully completing the summer program, it doesn't always land on time, but we usually are able to provide students at the end of the summer program, 
an educational stipend. Right, and it varies, pays again by funding. So it could be anywhere from 200 to 300, 350 dollars at the end of the summer. So again, the completion of the summer program, then students receive their educational stipend. Um, with so there's, uh, I want to make the distinction too, as you mentioned, the deposit. Once your aid is um, inputted into your tuition, right, and if you have money's left over, right? Like once your tuition has been applied and everything like your state and your federal aid, then some students do get um, a, what they call a reimbursement, like remaining aids, and that goes directly to the students. And there will be a form to get the direct deposit to be able to do that. That's separate from the educational stipend that you get each semester. So at the end of the summer, like I said, it can be anywhere between 200 to 350. Um, at the end of each fall, it's usually anywhere between five to 600 fall and spring. And so we call it educational stipend because that can go towards anything for your education. So once you're coming back onto campus, we have students using portions of that funding to buy monthly Metro cards and things like that um, to make sure that they can get onto campus once we get onto campus. So that I wanted to make that. But all financial aid related questions, again, we'll go into the FAAC at Baruch.uni. And then once you have your seat counselor, which you'll be assigned a summer seat counselor at the start of the summer program where you'll check in daily. And then you can start um, setting up one-on-one -on -one appointments with that person too, to help you navigate any of the challenges, if any, um, while you're in the summer. So again, thank you all for joining us um, this evening. Um, as, as VP Gorman on a very hot summer day to learn about our SEEK program and Baruch College. Again, we congratulate all of you in um, joining our program and also being admitted into Baruch College. Um, in your breakout rooms, I, hope, I also hope that you had a lot of your questions answered or had an opportunity to connect with one another a little bit more as well as our members of our team. Um, at this time, if folks have any other remaining questions, we're going to open up the floor for a few more moments to be able to answer any of your questions. Uh, so feel free to um, raise in the chat and or, um, you know, get off audio and ask, ask your question. So, Leanna, yeah, no. oh, so Leanna, do you mind if I let Jacob go first and then you can go right ahead? Jacob, go right ahead. Okay, so to clarify, the next time we're meeting is uh, based off of whether we are in immersion or not immersion. Correct. So either July yes. 6th or July 6th, either July 6th or July 12th. 12th. Um, uh, and David will be notifying folks before the end of this week um, who is in immersion. Right. Yes. Um, adding on to that idea, I wanted to ask, um, the immersion will be based on how um, we're placed based on our high school records, right? Yeah. Go ahead. The, the math placement is automatic. It's based on your high school records and it's automatic. So it's, it, it's done through the school and, and that's good. It's going to determine that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Leanna. Uh, yes, I have one more question about the meningitis form. Um, is there a deadline to when we need to submit the meningitis form? I'm, I'm assuming before the fall semester, before August 25th. Yes. I think I, I, think so, I can yes. answer my own question. <laughs> yes, it's all good. But I love that you're asking so many questions because I can guarantee you're, the, you're not the only one thinking about that. Yeah. So um, okay. uh, before August 25th, okay. um, you know, and I, you know, make sure that you're able to connect with your provider earlier on because this is also a busy time as folks are also trying to get the same types of documentation um, for their institutions. But yes, prior to August 25th, since we're not okay. on campus. Uh, okay. summer. Perfect. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, can folks see some of the questions on chat? Because I'm not able to really see it on my, my screen here. Are there any questions on the chat? Um I'm sorry. Um, you said that there was uh, a C contract that we have to fill out. When exactly do we fill that out? So I think it went out already. Dave, do you want to 
It didn't go out yet. We're still getting everything together. But I would say in the next week or so, we'll reach out with the intake form and the contract. That'll yes. be in the next week or two. So just so that you know what the contract is, just to give an outline, it's just an overview of the requirements of our program, right, for the summer, some of the privileges that you have as a Sikh student, um, the fact that you do have to meet with your counselor at a designated times throughout your time here at Baruch. And so you review that and then and you, and you submit it. And then that's reviewed with your Sikh counselor. Um, I'm not sure if they'll start doing that in the summer, but definitely by the fall, they'll review that and any questions you have in reference to that, um, they will address that. In reference to the intake, is, is information about, and we've started sent, ask, inquiring some questions already, like little surveys around technology, what kind of courses you prefer, um, as well as any, any um, tech support that you may need. Um, as well as majors that you're interested. The, the tech intake that we're gonna um, request from you is gonna be a little bit more comprehensive and asking you more information. All of that information is for myself and the members of our team to have a sense of who you are just in general, like who is the population that's coming into our program, right? And also what are specific needs that you have? Because um, there are some questions in there that will ask like, what are certain kind of needs that you have? So that way we can best support you. So everything is designed to really try to tailor in. There are certain nuts and bolts of the summer program and our program overall that remain the same, but then there are other components that we tailor based on what the needs are of our students coming into our program. And I have a question about IDs. Yes, Jim. Oh. Um, so how do we make the appointment for it? So they, the institution will contact you. Once you're registered, we will start registering you in the fall. So you're gonna be registered for summer, either for our SEEK summer program, as well as our credit bearing course, right? Um, but in the fall, but in sometime mid July, August, we will start registering you in the fall. Once you start getting registered, then the college is going to communicate with you because they may, they're going to be creating perhaps likely an appointment system to come in to take your picture and get your um, ID. Thank you. You're welcome. And some questions about stipends, you know, there most likely will be a summer stipend at the successful completion of our summer program. Most likely, we don't know the amount that, that can vary, but you will get a stipend, hopefully, uh, usually at the end of the summer program. Then you get the fall stipend, then you get the spring stipend. Those are part of your financial aid you'll get. That's why you want to get that direct deposit set up. Elham, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, I have a question based on uh, on guidance counselors in the sense that um, do is it one on one or is it on, with a bunch of people, like a bunch of students with on with one counselor? Both. So during the summer, there's going to be group communication. So you're meeting together as a team and basically is going to be discussing some of the expectations, not just within the SEEK program, but your transition into Baruch and some information about Baruch College. And also an opportunity for you to ask um, questions in general, like how in this venue, and it's a, generally anywhere between 25 to 30 students per group, right? Um, then at the same time, we have a system called Navigate where you can schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Um, appointments that are tailored specifically for you. And that's, so that's throughout your entire time that you're here. Your first year in your fall and spring, you'll have something called first year seminar. All Baruch College students have to take a first year seminar course. That's again, designed to successfully transition um, into the college environment. So your SEEK counselor will be facilitating the first year seminar. So that's again, in the group environment. But your one-on-ones would be um, set up via appointment, our appointment system, which will be um, discussed once you're coming here in the fall so we can support you. We'll send instructions and things like that on how to, to, to register for that. Um, and so, yeah, so it's a combination of group and one-on-one. -on -one. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. 
Any other questions? Will there be I said, um, assignments on the summer reading book that we'll have? Like in the end or like during this, this program? So not during the summer. I do know that the college will be, there'll be things in first year seminar. The college will be sending out more information about what's going to be accepted about, expected in the first, um, with, with the summer reading. So again, this book is um, a requirement for all incoming first year students. So there'll be communication that will come through the college or through us, it, you know, um, as a liaison for the college. Um, do you have a PDF file of the book? Because some that would be better for me. I don't know. No. For copyright reasons, we can't just distribute it commercially. You know, they're asking you, they got a discount, but we, we can't, there, there's copyright laws that would prevent us from mass emailing a PDF of the book. So we can't do that. I, I can't do that. Sorry. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I have a question based on like IB classes I took in. I've taken um so do our credits from those classes transfer over to um the schedules you will be making yes so you will be as part of the intake one of the i think if i'm correct dave and, and betty there's an intake question around whether you've um taken college now courses whether you've taken ap classes whether you've taken the ib um course and then you list them you know they'll ask for i think it asks for the college but definitely just basically asking yes or no um and here's my daughter eve um that you know whether or not you've done that we gather that information right um and then we follow up but also do your due diligence and follow up as well because sometimes you know um for whatever reason when folks are doing the intake they miss that question or they forget to put it on or something and we do ask multiple times because what ends up happening is that while we are designing your schedule we want to make sure we have that so that you can get the credit sometimes you'll just get the credit and betty you can correct me if i'm wrong in this we get the credit or sometimes you get the class and the credit, meaning that the, the course will, will, um, will, you know, transfer over and you don't have to take it at the college. Thank you, Christy. I would add to that, um, in addition to do your due diligence to get it as, as information as early as possible, because it impacts your fall registration, even um, as we register for your classes for the fall, please be in communication with your counselors constantly. So if you see any courses ever on your schedule that you may be expecting, whether it's um, college now or IB or AP credits, especially since some people do take the AP obviously even as late as currently now this, this, this semester, that you let us know so we can make changes. So the key word is to be in communication with your counselor. Thank you. Um, to see this information, can I send you my high school transcript? Or you guys already have it? You, you, you no, know, listen, the AB, IB, College Now, that goes through admissions. You're going to have to reach out to seek freshmen at baruch.cuny.edu. If you send us your high school transcript, we can't do anything with that. Reach out to them about AP, and, and, and they'll give you the instructions. And then you can find that on their website, too. But we, we can't do that with the high school transcript. Also, while I'm on the line, um, Listen, as for emails, claim your Baruch mail soon. Why? Because we're going to transition. Many of you have high school emails. If you are concerned you're not getting emails that you should be getting, email me. You've seen my email is up there. If you are really concerned, say, I'm not getting all these emails that, that other people have gotten, you can email me to double check. Most likely, all of you are getting our emails. You're here. Uh, that would mean you're getting emails because we emailed you to come here. That said, you get claim your Baruch mail because you're going to need it to access Blackboard anyway. And then also as the summer begins and continues, we're going to transition to your Baruch mail. So all those high school emails will become uh, obsolete in your college life. Um, thanks for the clarification and answering my question. Thanks. Leanna. Um, yes, I wanted to ask, where are you guys going to send the writing to retake the writing placement? Because some students took it, some didn't. Are we going to take it on Blackboard? 
on Blackboard or 21st? Blackboard. Or, oh, Blackboard. Okay, it's gonna be, You're going to have to log into Blackboard. So I, I think what it's going to mm -hmm. look like are instructions on how to log into Blackboard yes. and then how to take it via Blackboard. Unless Marisol mm -hmm. wants to jump in about if, if I'm wrong. Yeah, because Blackboard, you just have to log in with your CUNY First account and that it usually connects right there. Okay. That's correct. That, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you do it with Blackboard and you and you would log in via CUNY first. You're right. Okay. And, and Marisol, correct me if I'm wrong, if you, if you want to say anything about the writing assessment, if you want to add anything or about what that will look like or when, if you, if you want to jump in. Um, hi. So I'm sorry. I missed a little bit of what you said, but you will be taking the writing assessment on Blackboard and we will be sending out an email with instructions on how to access the assessment on Blackboard. So don't worry, you will get an email with all the information you need to know on how to take the test. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I see COVID vaccine. I think you should email medical records at Baruch, which is on the screen about vaccine info. I think that's your best bet uh, in terms of all, of all immunization requirements. So to, well, uh, I'm, go ahead. Oh uh, yeah. Um, what kind of like classwork are we like gonna like? What kind of classes are we gonna take during uh summer like program? Like, are we get? To, I think like one of them is math related, right? So yes. So the account. So there's gonna be math. There will be um some writing. Um. So things that you're gonna get while you're preparing to transition into to the fall. Um, if you're in a college credit course, you will be taking an introductory course that's required for all Baruch College students. So you'll be, it's called from CUNY Pathways. That's just one of the, the terminology they use it, but it's general courses. And so we will register you into a class that's a requirement for the institution. Um, we're going to be doing Wiseman courses, which are liberal arts classes. Um, as David had mentioned, it, you know, it'll be a psychology course or Black and Latino studies course. Those courses are heavy in the reading and heavy in the writing. Um, so it will be math, writing, and then courses that are focused on writing and reading. But all, both of those courses that we're offering are required in the CUNY pathways, which all students have to take um, during their time here. So. Think about, particularly in your fall semester, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but as you know, Baruch has three schools. There's Zicklin School of Business, which many students choose Baruch for the business schools. There's the Wiseman School of Arts and Sciences, which is the liberal arts. You know, if you think about being an English major, psychology major. And then there's Mark Schools of Public and International Affairs for those of you that think about government relations or being involved in the community and those kinds of fields. Regardless of what school you're thinking of being a part of, all incoming first year students take general classes, right? So it'll be the intro to English, you know, English, to, I don't even remember, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong time to advise, but it's the intro to English, the math, whether it's at the, at the 10,000 level or the 2,000 level, right? Um, or 1,000 level rather than 2,000 level. It will be, you know, again, a psychology course. It will be a communications course. It will be, um, you know, all courses that generally um, students would have to take. You won't get into your specific major, right? We'll start registering during your spring, like that track until your second semester in um, your first year. So if you're thinking about going to Zicklin, then we'll start tailoring it and giving you some of the Zicklin prerequisites. Um, if, you know, again, if you're stick sticking with Wiseman, we will have you take the liberal art courses in the major that you're thinking about and the same thing with, with Marx. So all that to say this summer, if you're taking a three credit course, that is in preparation in regardless of whatever track you choose. Um, and all students will get heavy duty on the math because regardless of your major, you will have a math requirement uh, that you need before you graduate. Um, so yeah. Shania, is that, am I, did I pronounce your, right, your name right? It's Shania, Shania yeah. Adams. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, uh, well, I, it was kind of been answered in the chat. I basically was just wondering like, so, um, I'm deciding to major in psychology and I was just wondering about like 
when do we choose minors or if that's available, I guess. But I think it's already been answered in chat. I'm yeah. not sure. It has been answered, yes. But if you already know what you, what major you want to go to and you're thinking about a minor as well, then you can start having that conversation with the summer counselor that you're working with and they can start supporting you in mapping out that curriculum. You do that in the fall, right? You can, you can start as early. You can start in the fall, but if you know a little bit, you can start having that conversation with the seat counselor that you're working with in the summer to start okay. thinking about that. Thank you. Any other questions? Because we're coming to a close. All right, folks, um, for summer program questions, as David had mentioned, feel free to contact David uh, Rosen. It's listed there. Financial aid, again, contact the financial aid email that's there. Immunization, the medical records email. Again, the college now AP courses, the seek freshman at Baruch because that goes straight to admissions. Um, technology or other questions specifically around seek, please contact seek at baruch.cuny.edu. Again, we wanna acknowledge all of you. We recognize that the last almost two years has been a whirlwind and that's putting it mildly. And the fact that you are here, you're choosing to share this chapter of your lives with us it is a privilege and an honor. I'm gonna tell you right now and I'll speak on behalf of our entire team. The work that we do, we don't view it as work. We really love what we do. You give us the privilege to witness this chapter of your time. Um, which is a very powerful one. And we get to be with you um, throughout this entire process and upon graduation and as alum, because if you notice, there are several alums that are here working with us and that you'll have an opportunity to meet alums that are in a variety of sectors as well as Betty has started out earlier because we're part of a legacy. And now you are part of the legacy that are in a particular moment in history. And so we are so excited to see how this time is going to evolve as you are now making your contribution in this way. So again, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we wish you the best and we can't wait to see some of you July 6th, some of you July 12th, but we will all be together this summer um, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll in the fall. So again, thank you. Um, and thank you to our team uh, for creating this, this orientation. Thank you, Dave, Betty, Rodolfo, Marisol, and all of our seat counselors. Um, it's greatly appreciated. Be well, everyone. Have a nice thank day, you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.